Why, hello there, and welcome to Wilmington, North Carolina. Standing here next to the Cape Fear River, we're gonna go on a little history tour. We're going to check out the USS North Carolina, a World War II battleship, which is right there. Look at that thing. That's awesome. So they set it up as a memorial, a little museum. You can go on the ship itself, explore, we're gonna go check it out. Let's, let's go. Fantastic looking water vessel right there. This is surprising me a little bit, look at this. Beware of alligator. Please do not feed the wildlife. See any gators down there? Right now the water's a little low. Water level's a little low. Alligators, this far north? Here we have a photo of the ship being put into place here in Wilmington. Your admission ticket is a little sticker that you put on your shirt. We got our stickers. Let's go. It was $14 per adult, $6 for the child. Well, the child, and I refer to that as the bug. She's not with us, but the other child, this one, this guy right here. And then we did a $2 donation to help maintain the grounds. We're about to go out there. Paid admission beyond this point. Got some displays before we're gonna go take that walkway. Here we have a scale version of the ship. Here we go, up to the deck. Right as we walk up on deck, we have the USS North Carolina National Historic Landmark marker here. It was dedicated in 1986. In memoriam, the USS North Carolina Battleship Memorial commemorates the his heroic, I almost said historic, the heroic participation of the men and women of North Carolina in the prosecution and victory of the Second World War. Quite the impressive ship here. Over here we have a 16 inch armor piercing projectile. Could penetrate another ship's armor or reinforced fortifications on the shore. BB 55 used it only for shore bombardments. Here we have a little plaque here saying eyes in the sky and some old photographs explaining how they launch the aircrafts when they're out at sea. And they actually have one of these planes right here up on deck so you can check it out. What was that? Why is the ship blue? Is that true? That makes sense. Quite a view staring down those guns. Those are some big guns. If we go down this way, we can go below deck. This giant thick cable here. It's actually a tow cable. Here's this displays. It took about a hundred men to handle. This cable is huge. So you just take it, throw it off the front, hook it to another battleship. You get towed away if you needed to. So here we have the turret, the long guns there, big guns, 60 foot barrels. It does say the turret is open. 
right here. We may climb inside and duck our head down, climb on up in. the loading process continuing. They must speak about the entire loading process as we go. There's some pretend, they're a little creepy stick figures right there. Loading up the barrel. This is the turret transfer panel. Lots and lots of switches, gizmos and gadgets. elsewhere on the ship. Tight, tight areas. One of the crew would have been positioned in that little spot right there. Very tight. Got a little seat where you can control. viewfinder before I didn't realize I thought those were eye holes those are adjustments this is where you actually would look into see if we can angle it properly really can't because we have multiple cameras in there but but yeah that's that's it there we go that's a little bit better view we can see the building out front This right here, according to the signage, is the Mark III Mod 1 computer. Ford Instrument Company, each turret has a backup fire control computer. The operator could generate the train and elevators of the gun. The V55 was the first battleship to have Mark III computers. caution tape there. We got some more seats where you can sit and operate these different valves. It really is crazy. I mean, this is just the turret. This has nothing to do with the actual operation, but it really is crazy how many controls there are to operate these things. Uh, let's go down. Oh, hey, buddy. Probably turn around and face this way. Yeah. That would be smarter. Now we can go to the lower deck. Go back under the deck here. Ooh, it's roomy in here. The engine room is that way. Straight. Welcome to the second deck. Looks like a little food quarters here. And a folding chaplain's organ. It looks like they would have service here in this corner. 
Here we have the bake shop. oven here. Nice working area. This is interesting. So we have this photograph right here. It was actually taken right over here two things that stick out to me in the photo, this very distinct, I'm not even sure what that is, it looks like a, a baking tool, and then this valve up here, I also have this downward ventilation pipe, all that can be seen in that photo right there. Here's some of the sweets and treats they would have made in this area here. Looks delicious. This is an original plaque here, so it's the fresh water system operating instructions. So this is explains to you how to operate the fresh water system. These big tanks here. The little guy's already down there. We're going down another level. It is convenient they put these little pads to not hit your head. You got the hatch, they took the door off. That door is supposed to go where you just walked through. Who wants to go down the creepy looking jail cell looking tunnel first? Well, we're going down another level. Must be the engine room. This is a twisty, turny maze down here in the engine room. Really is amazing. I was seeing it up there about all the contraptions and buttons, ways to control it. It's impressive. We have a fuel oil transfer diagram. So this shows all the passageways for oil throughout the ship. If grates and things like that scare you, then whatever you do, saying it but it's true I mean it's just crazy to think how you control these things because look there's just valves after valves after valves after valves they're even in the floor down here I think they're just everywhere it's amazing to just think about like people knew how to control all these and what controlled what and Amazing. Here we have some pipe identification and how you would identify what is what. Everything from compressed air to brine water. Here we have a diagram explaining the high pressure and low pressure propulsion turbines this contraption right here I also have some labels showing you as well so main steam supply exhaust goes out that way so the main steam supply goes down this way into the low pressure
these gauges on the engines. I believe this is an original educational video for boiler repair. Alright, we're going back up here. Up, 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 up. All right, there's the hallway that we went through to go down. So you just do a simple loop. So they send us one way down into the engine room and then back up out. And then we come up into the butcher shop right here. Showing some examples of some cuts. This refrigerator here. The USS North Carolina Victory Thanksgiving Day dinner in 1942. We have our menu here. Cream of celery soup, croutons, bright olives, celery hearts, green olives, golden brown turkey, giblet gravy, cranberry sauce, oyster dressing, and it just goes on and on. Yummy. This is a potato peeler machine right here. Put them in the top. Operate the machine with water. And come out nice and peeled. Interesting. See an occasional other person or so, but sometimes you just get stuck fairly large rooms for it being on a ship all alone. All alone. The master at arms. We have the ship store. Battleship had two stores. Store number one sold candy, tobacco, and toiletries. It's located across the strip next to the post office. Items sold in this store changed over the years. In 1941, when the ship was in the New York Navy Yard, the store sold magazines, books, uniform items, souvenir pillowcases, photo albums. All changed when the war began. All sales were cash only. Prices were clearly posted. At the soda fountain. You can get your drinks here. Coca Cola sends thirst flying. We also have a Pepsi Cola advertisement there as well. We don't discriminate. Here we have the post office. We are little window. ship store number one that we were talking about. There's some prices there. 
chocolate bars and candy rolls, box 24, 80 cents. Here we have the garbage grinder. It's a security measure. All the ship's garbage was brought here to be ground up for disposal. The grinder would grind the garbage, mix it with water, and then release it into the ocean over the ship's propellers. This avoided leaving a trail that the enemy could follow. Now we're talking. There's the ice cream machine. Heck yeah. On the corner of the post office here is the actual US mail box. If you want to mail out the letters, you can just pull down as it says and insert the letter there. the barber shop. That way we can make sure you're looking good. Nice and clean cut. Regulation haircuts only. You can definitely get lost quite easily in here. Here we have the cobbler shop. It's a shoe repair shop. This is the laundry receiving room. And the laundry ironing room. This got quite hot down here. Look, there's a dark room back there, a photo lab, dark room. Hmm. The print shop. Lots of stairs in this place. Original hydroelectric steer wiring diagram. I'm back pretty far. It is quite peaceful in here. So a couple of those rooms were getting a little crowded. I'm all alone. A little eerie, actually. It got really quiet. The other rooms was like real loud. Super quiet in here. Eerie feeling, actually. It's wild. When this siren sounds after steering station, take control. Looking at these stairs, I'm not quite sure if they were added in later because there's also a ladder here. Like, is that the original? Do they use ladders for all these hatches? Or were these stairs original? Because they look old, they look original. Here we have the Lucky Bag. The Lucky Bag, clothing and other personal gear found lying around the ship, would make its way here to the Lucky Bag. It's like a lost and found section. Unclaimed property, it says in there. Stuff to 
Tough to see. Interesting. Lucky pack. Cold storage down below. We are going to walk through a thawing room. We have to caution. There's going to be low overhead. We have the ice machine room. Thawing room. Fruits and veggies. That's where they stored all the food. And all these chicken birds down here. I'd also like to add, it's quite hot in here. I'm spending. Watch your head. Here is such a simple design, they just kind of swivel in and out like that one, so that's tucked in. Those are out where you can sit on them. So simple, but fascinating. This is the provisions issue room, so this is where the crew would come to get their supplies for cooking. Now we're talking here's the movie projection room, you can see the projectors there. Movies were shown on the mess decks when the ship was not in a combat zone. Repeat, not in a combat zone. This cage houses the motion picture projector and the screen at the opposite end of the compartment. See the screen right down there. A large amount of beds here. Bunk beds from the floor all the way to the ceiling. This is where crew members would sleep. Here we have the wishing well. Wishing well, not exactly. Standing beside one of the several loading trunks, heavy objects including 16 inch projectiles were lowered down in this trunk to an appropriate level below. So this hatch basically would go from the deck all the way down to where it needed to go, way down there. It's pretty far down there at the bottom. You can see all the change and donations thrown into the wishing well there. Quite a few dollar bills. Here's the restroom, shower areas. You can see those toilets there. Pretty much just a giant trough. Whew, that had to spell not so nice. What do you think? There's some urinals. See, fresh water went down and shut off. Privacy? You lost that when you joined the Navy. Another mailbox. 
I did not see this hatch over here. There's an incinerator back there. I haven't seen you in like three hours. Oh, you're all sweaty. <laughs> it's hot in here, isn't it? You didn't bring water with you? I know. Here we have the dentist's office. We have three chairs lined up. Get all your dental needs taken care of. Also have x-ray room in here it's the medical supply I believe we're in the medical portion of the ship obviously this is an operating room Isolation ward, just in case I didn't keep it away from the crew. Here on the third deck, we have the machine shop. This is where they would do general repairs, machinery, and equipment. Going down again. And we went up and down so many times. Look at all these switches and controls. Ladder to wear. Look up. Notice a small opening. This is an armored tube. It goes six decks. Access to equipment, access to fire control tower, and access to an escape hatch. Six decks. All the way up. Four hours a day by Yeoman and a supervisor. An outgoing message from an officer who is delivered here and converted into the correct format for transmission. This is the damage control station where they would keep track of all the damage to the ship. If you actually look here, you can see this isn't an actual door. They cut this door in. The original access was up here through a watertight compartment. That way this whole section, this whole control section was all watertight. So if it started to sink, I wouldn't get any water in here. Slightly terrifying to think that it could sink all the way. And you'd still be trapped in there. Just slightly. Luckily, they do have these markers throughout the ship. 
because you really can get turned around very easily. Here's an example of the mattresses on some of the beds. A little thicker than I thought. I thought they were going to be a little thinner than that. Warhead storage. Oh my goodness, we're going down again. This time on a spiral staircase. Wow, look at this in here. That fencing is not original. Fencing was added for public safety, so there would not have been a fence middle there. The loading tray. This room, I don't know why, it's just incredibly impressive to me. It's amazing how so much of this vessel is so tight quarters and in here it's, it's a large room. Big. Very important part of the ship, though. And immediately back into tight quarters. These are gunpowder storage tanks. These rollers would help you send equipment across. The red circle on the end of the practice bags represents the end containing the black powder. I can only imagine the amount of tension that was felt inside these rooms during active war times, like just yelling, the shouting, the teamwork, the cooperation, the tension, the fear, the bravery. Right back out to where we were. We do have a labeled port side forward, starboard side, that way you know where you are facing, and this whole section rotated depending on where you wanted to fire. These spiral stairs. Not gonna lie, I haven't seen anyone in quite a bit. And this guy almost made me jump. He's like, ah! He was just staring at me from around the corner. Here we have the steward's branch. It's a full cooking room, a full kitchen. Here we have a diver. Look at this old diving equipment. Amazing into the whole ghosts and spooky things, but back in the medical wing again, if anywhere's haunted, a place like this, for sure. The pantry and the warrant offices. Some photo.
what it would have looked like furnished right there. Not too much in it nowadays. This is the section where everyone had their own private quarters. Here's the medical officer's quarters. Here's the flag office. And we have a plaque that says to honor all Marines who have served aboard this gallant ship presented by the United States Seagoing Marine Association. Like some trapped in between groups now. I think this is towards the exit, so maybe it's cool back there. You can only go a certain way, tour that way, or this way. Do we go up and out? Or do we keep going that way? Let's go that way. That was definitely the wrong choice. That was just a big circle. That's where I already was. We're going up and out. We're going to the main deck, right up here. Blinded by the light. In all honesty, we've been down there for over an hour, I believe. Not very long considering how long some people would have gotten on this ship for. Back up on the main deck now. Look at this. Do not enter. This must be a bridge to get equipment up here. The size of these chains. And go to the very front of the ship. Now this ship is not going anywhere. It's in the water, little section that they dug out off of the river here. But between that bridge way over there and then that bridge over there, it's stuck. It can't go anywhere. Might as well be grounded. It is still sitting in the water though. I think it probably is grounded actually. Amazing. We have a photo of the ship in the dry dock when it was shot by a Japanese torpedo on the port side. It's a 32 foot long by 18 foot high hull. Dry dock repairs were made at Pearl Harbor Navy Yard. Were fixed in 21 days. They fixed the hull. They're just everywhere you look, there are just guns riddled throughout the ship. I'm gonna go up one more deck here. Some big guns. It's a five inch 38 caliber twin gun mount.
I know I keep saying it, but it's just amazing how much you're actually able to explore on this ship. You could definitely spend hours upon hours here. This deck has seen the weather for sure. You stopping? We have the fire control radar. As it says on the sign there, a mighty fortress. And it is, look how thick that steel is. It's tough to see with the glares. Very, very thick. Oh, here's a good example right there. That's how thick. Look at my hand with the water bottle. It's crazy. Yep, these ones are open. So this is so you could look out, you could fire, shoot out there, or you could close it. And you still have a little eye hole there to look out. Here we have a magnetic compass. Here we have the captain's sea cabin. So when they were out to sea, this is where his quarters would be. Here we find ourselves going into the bridge here. It's a little bit better view. Action cam mode. We had to use that mode quite a bit. Full speed ahead. Evan. Engine revs indicator. And we have a compass here. Another magnetic compass. Could also call anywhere you wanted on the ship from here. One last look. On April 6, 1945, the battleship, along with three large aircraft carriers, two light carriers, and three battleships. Four light cruisers and 12 destroyers were fighting off the coast of Okinawa. During the day, an estimated 182 Japanese kamikazes and 22 groups attacked the Allied ships. Just after 1 o'clock in the afternoon, an Allied ship fired at a low-flying kamikaze, and it struck the battleship North Carolina. A 5-inch 38th caliber projectile hit the base of the sky, too, right there. You can see them repairing it. It does also say that you can actually see the welding seams where they fixed it. So right here's where it hit. So that was friendly fire. And you can see those welding seams right there. That's, that's where they repaired the hole from the projectile. Interesting. Very interesting. You don't like that ladder? unstable oh it's fine it's a little wobbly but it's fine oh. back on the deck this here is a 26 foot whaleboat Navy built thousands of these small wooden boats only a few survive today they're utility boats for transporting personal personnel supplies and mail the little man has taken the helm at the guns here. Go ahead, spin it. Rotate it, go. Rotate it. Spin it. Spin it. <laughs> right 
Randy's handling the big guns. And like any good tourist attraction, you must exit through the gift shop. Here of the SECU Memorial Walkway. Walkway rolls. No trespassing when the gates are closed. The gate is open. Let's go take one last lap around the USS Carolina. What a sight to see. This walkway here goes all the way around the perimeter of the ship. Beautiful little walk. Hey buddy, what you doing down there? Just hanging out, just admiring the view. One last final look before we head on out. What a magnificent view. Fantastic. And that is going to do it for this video. That was an awesome tour. That was an awesome experience. If you ever find yourself in the Wilmington area, be sure to check out the USS North Carolina. It's battleship right here. If you enjoyed the video, like it, subscribe to the channel. We do lots of filming locations, travel videos, and random things like this from time to time. And until next time, be good, have fun, and learn something.